so that's what they're also doing. Hey everyone, welcome back to the episode. I'm Londi Bridges, and today we're back with some more Beacon Pines, and we're actually picking up exactly where we left off. We have two options. One, we can go back and accept Iggy's request to sacrifice himself, or we can avoid that because that's too much emotion for right now <laughs> and go back and interrogate Mr. Tolliver for the third time. And I'm actually leaning more towards Mr. Tolliver. I think that if we do, uh, we'll be able to hopefully find out more about what Grant's been up to. Okay, so here we are. So this is where we were with Iggy. So we're gonna avoid that for right now. <laughs> and let's go back to Mr. Tolliver. They run the classic good cop. Sly cop. Much better than... I think the worst was probably chill cop. <laughs> They'd run the classic good cop, sly cop interrogation. Is it Beck this time? Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. It is, yeah. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. Not. What? Not, 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 not. What's going on here? Not, 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 not. You, you're that mold well girl. Please, call me back. Sorry about all Mr. this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. Seems there's been a mix-up. You see him down here for the same reason you are. No, 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 no. Juniper sent you here. Oh, we're gonna pretend that she's in on Beck it. caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Grand. This nice. was gonna be easy. <laughs> it's probably the best one so far. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Spark Plug has us all on edge. I guess you thought you needed some backup. Not, 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 not. But she sent a child. A better way to avoid prying eyes. Who would suspect a kid? Not, 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 not. I suppose that makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. Hopefully he doesn't see um, everyone else in the room. It had to be uncomfortable. Not, not, not. A little, yeah. But you understand, we never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. No, no. Very true. Return that we're both here Beck to... Beck twirled her hand, <laughs> as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Let us know what it is. No, no, no. Destroy the evidence? Beck shook her of head course, and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. No, no, no. <laughs> she sure is. No, 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 no. Can't blame her. Anyone find out that we're going to destroy the source? Oh, so that's what they're also doing. Well, in the other Thailand, we took, we almost took care of it, I guess. But we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. You sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusts me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good. There's one more loose end I'll go work on. What's the loose end? Loose end? Oh, it's nothing really. Tell us. The other day I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shop. I wanted to know it. I intercepted an old phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. Huh. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's password for? No, no, no. We don't know. I don't think we've seen a safe or anything that needs a password. Unless it's part of Perennial Harvest Headquarters. So we have a password and know where to put it. No, 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 no. It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. We should probably go work that out. <laughs> Got this under control. Deck is probably my favorite. No, no, no. That's a relief. No, 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 Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the Bye. stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. Don't doubt us. With a shrug, <laughs> he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Yes. You guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time the Tolliver's had a candy shop. <laughs> All he ever sells is the apples. Beck blinked slowly <laughs> in disappointment. Oh. Password, Rolo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. But 
In the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. What's she doing? He said he heard a password on the radio. We have one of those radios. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Hmm, okay. What's another word for underground? Below ground? <laughs> probably, it's probably really pretty obvious. Buried, covered. Could it be a cover up? Wow. Would never have guessed it. <laughs> I think it's one of those each letter the number thingies. So U would be 21, N would be 14, D would be, isn't that like a lot of numbers? Ooh, it's an anagram. Nun Creed's drugstore. Rolla, <laughs> come on through. Luca and Beck looked at Rolla with amazement. That was pretty good. Rolla, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Kren's nude drugstore. <laughs> it's definitely not. Yeah, I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. Maybe that's where they had uh, Rolla when they kidnapped him. At Nun Creed's. Well, I guess we know where to go next. Unless no one comes here. Okay. Brand, you're not here? Great. Don't mind us. Let's go. <gasps> it's one of the man's peeps. Hi. Uh, you scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen the taller around, have you? Eh. Not us. <laughs> Nope. He's got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. It has nothing to do with us. You stay here. We're all good. Okay. No one to be found. We're all good. So let's head over. Oh, the Valentines. Her late Augustus. Sore sister. Was cut up with work. Work. You. Had a few more details of lockdown for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? What is this Sepa Town Festival really about? Huh. I honestly didn't think that Augustus Valentine was in on anything. But he might be. Gus I think looked around nervously. I think Mr. Crow really does just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings and song you as mayor so that you can make friends. Ooh. Wow. Your job is to help me figure out what current perennial harvest's true intentions are with this town. I always thought that the um the Valentine of the left, she was always doing something bad, but it could be she's actually the good guy. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me? This was our father's town. It's gone, Eris. He isn't coming back. All that left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. So maybe that's why he's more inclined to help Kerr. He accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning father's warehouse into toxic dumping ground. It's just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from our damn backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. So their hands are not 100% clean. When this all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Eris's cry hung in the air. I probably blame all of you guys. <laughs> A new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change whether we like it or not. So we know something's happening. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future? Or be forgotten in the past? How about being the right side? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus. And you'll always just be August. Is that an insult? <laughs> Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. How's that an insult? Hi! Getting late, children. Okay. Well, we're gonna keep doing what we're planning on doing. We gotta go to Nun Creeds. Oh, hey, Solomon! Haven't seen you forever. What are you doing for Nun Creeds? Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. <laughs> 
Hey, Sam. Look at Mr. Nancrete. Is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Then where'd you get the candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. What kind of arrangement? Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. <laughs> Sometimes the small pleasures in life. We might not always have family to rely on. Licorice has never let me down. Oh, it's so sad. Solomon's the illegitimate son of Eris' father, right? I think that's what we learned last time. Well, I can't say licorice will be my first choice. But whatever floats your boat. <laughs> you can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection. Oh, I love me a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Oh, yeah, I guess. I like sour cups. <laughs> I'm certain you do. I always wondered why Mr. Nancrete kept licorice in stock. He must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold hard cash. Wow. Oh. So it just pays him to have licorice on, on stand? Well, he's right, it's locked. Telephone booth. There's gotta be more clues. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's good. What are you guys looking at? Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? It has to connect to Nuncrete's. Besides Mr. Nuncrete? No. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. It just looks like a normal telephone booth, right? This is not a normal phone booth. Never mind. It looks different. <laughs> it's got like a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Crens mm -hmm. nude rug store. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. underground secrets. Oh. Mm -hmm. The password. Beck flung open the door That's and they all good. squeezed in. Got it. All right, let's see here. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. Underground. Secrets. <laughs> Sounds like that did something. Great, now what? We're going down. I guess we... Ah! The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Hopefully there's no one down there. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. Hope we not to die again. I think we had an ending where literally we got kidnapped. It was bottom. unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. What? The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. They cleaned it? I knew it. You knew that there was a secret pub full of strange tubes under the phone booth. <laughs> I don't think you did. <laughs> of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. <laughs> I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the trans-dimensional conduits from Hank Atomic issue number 12 were real? Well, at one point or another, you said that about every technology ever discussed at Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. <laughs> it looks like each of these has something written on them. What does it say? Valentine Furler's a warehouse. Is this how they're able to get around without people seeing them? Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Yeah. Why would perennial harvest have a tube going to old Valentine place? It's starting to feel like something big. What's this one? Perennial harvest main office? Okay, that makes sense. Uh, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. <laughs> I was like, she's pretty. She's pretty smart. Is she involved in all of this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. That's fair. Maybe she knows something. Mining operations alpha. So is that when the real beacon finds? You guys have mines here. Not that I know of. This town is all farms and fertilizer. A series of tubes. Pa always says you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. <laughs> Not sure how that wisdom applies in an exact situation. The thing about Pa, you don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Hmm. Can you mess with this? No. Um, this suit has a broken mask. 
Was that the one that Gran had? That she borrowed. So have we found our mystery warehouse creeper? We at least found our hazmat suit. It walks like an uncreed. It talks like an uncreed. I don't think it's an uncreed. Let's not jump to conclusions. Because Gran tried to knock him out with that, that jam. Just saying. Now we can check out the panel. That's a lot of buttons. <laughs> Truly is. Set aside Earthlings, I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. Frollo's hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. I wonder if he knows what to do. Eeny, meeny, miny. He doesn't. Oh. Wait. Yeah, Rolo, what did you do? Nothing. How'd you even mow yet? Is someone coming? What was that? Hide. Where? Nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. We're just gonna stand here? None creed. <laughs> Wasn't us. <laughs> awesome. You all need to come with me now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Honestly, regardless if we get answers, we're not going with you. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told him it was an absurd password. But they love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. I can keep you hidden until after the festival. You might be able to save your skins. I don't think Duncreed is a good person, right? Because I know Gran... It seemed like Gran and him were at odds. Unless he really was on Grand's side. We don't care about our skins. Hold on now. I like my skin. This all stops now, not Creed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. I was like, who's Joseph? Oh, it's Nuncreed. You sound just like him. Is it his dad? Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were friends back before. He gestured toward the strange tubes. Oh, so his dad knew about this. All of this. That's a lie. It's true. He used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on helping folks. So you were his sidekick? No. We were partners. But I thought Walt was actually nice. He really wanted to change the town. He thought he noticed how none Cree was sick, other people were sick. So he really wanted to help. He helped the patients and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. <laughs> I think he's a Robin to your Batman. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. Know what? One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us. This has got an opportunity. He'd found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. My dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. The thing I could never get him to understand was, it's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. So Nuncree was selfish. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. Walt loved being righteous almost more than he loved his family. I wouldn't say that's mean. He was wrong about one thing though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. But how? Valentine's don't seem to be, like, really into it. They know something's happening. So whoever um, the main guy in Perennial Harvest works for, is he related to our a Valentine? Is there a point to the sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. Oh no, what are you gonna do to us? Nun Creed took a menacing step towards the children. How about we get back in the little elevator? I'll try to keep you safe. 
I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this. You did nothing. But you forced my hand. Luca began to laugh. <laughs> what? You really don't know. My grant isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper! Seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. She's going to disrupt the festival. Why would she? The color Because you're not a nice man. Face. Oh my goodness, he like, seems really upset. <laughs> How does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we busted into today. <laughs> and honestly, hers is way cooler. I would agree, honestly. We've got maps, explosive, bad intentions, and jam, of course. Big man. Nuncreed grabbed Whoa. Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. You need to tell me what she's gonna do right now. Nope. I ain't doing it. She needs to understand what it is she's messing with. I, uh... Tell me now. She's in danger, boy. I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in Town Square. A fountain? But why would... A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. That... So the, the, where the fountain is currently is where in the old beacon pines there is a source. Are they connected? So she knows about the source, so they must be connected. What the heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear gosh, she's going to freeze us all, so is it Gran that did it? <laughs> I like his little, little ears in the background. <laughs> You all need to run. Run where? Away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west, don't look back. No! <laughs> That's kinda cool. That did not go how I expected. Are we following him? So... We're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. <laughs> you good? Yep. Love this town. <laughs> Chapter 8 The Cold Hard Truth. Nice. Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera, as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. <laughs> Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Nice. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. Yeah, we're in the old... A pass. burst of wintry air snapped across her face, and she was flung out into the cold. Party with some fluids in there. <laughs> Any idea where we are? It's somewhere cold. Doesn't look like it got on any of us. <laughs> Didn't feel like we traveled that far. So where did it all go? I like how Roll is having his own little conversation. <laughs> this place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out of here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. Try to catch up to Nun Creek. I think he went this way. All right, I think we're gonna stop it here for today. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Go ahead and smash the subscribe button. And of course, as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.